On today's show, Amazon showcases its new high-tech electric delivery vehicle as engineered and built by Rivian. Waymo gets the go-ahead to open its autonomous taxi fleet to members of the public in Phoenix, Arizona, and the iconic library van goes all electric courtesy of Volvo. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome to another weekend roundup into the news from the world of cleaner and greener vehicles and energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with some fantastic news. The fact that, despite COVID-19, global interest in electric vehicles is continuing to soar. According to a study released by Ipsos this week, consumers all around the world are paying more attention to electric vehicles than ever before. But that interest is particularly strong in China and the US. To back this data up, newly released sales figures from a wide swathe of different automakers shows that, save for brand new internal combustion engine models that were introduced to the market at the tail end of last year, electric vehicle sales are the only automotive sales that are increasing year on year, while internal combustion engine vehicles as a whole are slumping. The reasons for this are all pretty complex, but we did make a video on the topic that you can watch on this channel. Late last year, shortly after it led a $700 million funding round in electric startup Rivian, Amazon placed an order with the same for a total of 100,000 electric delivery trucks, trucks which were to be designed and built by Rivian. This week, we saw the first of those delivery vehicles revealed. With large, round, eye-like headlights and the Amazon logo acting as a nose, the truck is far less boxy than your average delivery vehicle. We don't have actual specs of the truck's battery pack or drivetrain, but I suspect it may share a lot of that with the R1T. Technology-wise, there's Amazon Alexa integration for hands-free route and delivery information, as well as an all-round camera system, highway and traffic driver assistance technologies, and plenty of storage in the rear. We'll see these roll out on a street near you in the coming months. Audi has been busy this week teasing footage and audio of its upcoming e-tron GT. First debuted more than a year ago as a concept vehicle, the e-tron GT actually shares a platform with the Porsche Taycan, and as such, we can expect some serious performance and beefy charging capabilities when it finally comes to market. This week, however, Audi wanted to focus less on the car's performance, or the fact that it's now beginning production of the same, but rather the sound that the e-tron GT will have when it launches. Yep. That's right, in order to comply with noisemaker regulations around the world at low speed, most automakers have gone out and out into sound design, and the e-tron GT is no exception. Its sound? Typically futuristic, but with enough differentiation from other EVs that those with a keen air won't mistake it for something that's a lot cheaper. And no, we don't have a price yet, but I can tell you it won't be cheap. When Tesla finishes construction of its Giga Berlin next year, it will almost immediately begin producing European spec Tesla Model Ys there. But as confirmed by Elon Musk this week, the Model Y being made in Berlin will, for a while at least, be different to the ones being produced elsewhere in the world. That's because Giga Berlin will be the first Tesla factory to build Model Ys with a new structural battery pack made of 4680 cells that we heard about a few weeks ago during Tesla's Battery Investor Day. Additionally, German-built Model Ys will feature single-piece front and rear castings. In a tweet explaining the change, Musk said that the battery pack will be, quote, a bonded structure with cells providing shear transfer between steel upper and lower face sheets. Once Giga Berlin has proven the technology, Giga Shanghai and Tesla's Fremont facility will switch to making vehicles on the same design. Mercedes-Benz has been eagerly showcasing its upcoming lineup of all-electric EQ family for vehicles this week, pushing new footage of the EQS undergoing final testing alongside two new models, the EQE and the EQS SUV. The EQS, due to go on sale around the world next year after the launch of the compact EQA electric crossover, is expected to be something of a flagship for the brand. But given its expected high sticker price, I don't anticipate it cross-shopping much right now. 
It will be followed to market by the EQS SUV, an SUV variant of the EQS, as well as the EQB compact crossover and two E-Class-based EVs, the EQE and EQE SUV. It's great to see these vehicles out and about testing, even if they are camouflaged, but given some of the challenges Mercedes-Benz had getting the EQC produced in large volumes, well, I hope those things are solved before these new models go on sale. The Polestar 2 electric car has received its official EPA range rating this week, as has its sibling, the Volvo XC40 Recharge. Built on the same underpinnings as each other, the Volvo XC40 Recharge manages a 208-mile, 335-kilometre EPA range from its 78-kilowatt-hour battery pack. That's significantly lower than the 233 miles, or 375 kilometres, EPA range given to the Polestar 2. Why are these two cars so different in their range figures when they're based on the same underlying platform? Well, that's pretty easy. Despite having the same underpinnings and chassis as each other, which I should remind you also underpin the recently announced Link & Co Concept Zero, the XC40 Recharge is significantly larger and heavier than the Polestar 2. It's less aerodynamic too, and sadly, physics is physics. Following a series of documented fires involving its Kona EV, Hyundai is readying a voluntary recall safety campaign for all Kona EVs. At the heart of the recall is the high-voltage battery pack produced for Hyundai by LG Chem. It's believed that potential manufacturing faults with Kona EV packs could lead to short circuits in certain vehicles. That short circuit, of course, being the ultimate seat of the fires that have occurred thus far. It's believed that some 25,564 Kona EVs built in the last three years will be recalled. Remedial work will be covered free of charge and will involve a software update to the car's battery management system, as well as a thorough inspection of each battery pack. If required, faulty packs will be replaced free of charge. After more than a decade of testing, development, and major advances in automotive technology, first as Google's self-driving team and more recently as Alphabet's autonomous spin-off Waymo, you can now book a fully autonomous self-driving minivan. At least you can if you live in Phoenix, Arizona, where Waymo's fleet of autonomous Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans have been given the green light to begin accepting ride requests from members of the general public. Previously, only those who were part of Waymo's limited early rider fleet test program could actually book and use the service, but as of this week, anyone in the region can download the Waymo One app and, if they're in the 50 or so square miles covered by the service, get a driverless minivan, pick them up and shuttle them to their destination. While it's still continuing to operate in a very geographically small area, Waymo has its sights set on something larger, operating in California. As you probably know by now, I am a total classic car nut. I used to own two Morris Miners, which is how Kate Walton Elliott and I met and became good friends. She's converting a Morris Miner to electric. And come to think of it, it's kind of how we ended up making silly YouTube videos together many years ago. So it's no surprise that when RBW Electric Classic Cars caught my attention with its all new electric Roadster and GT based on the classic MGB, I had to take a look. Unlike the classic electric cars on sale today, which are essentially ground up restorations, RBW Electric Classic Cars takes heritage body shells, that's new body shells built at the British Motor Heritage Limited, and then building brand new electric classics on top. This means they are technically new cars with special exemption from things like airbags because of their limited production volume. So far so good, but they'll set you back an eye-watering 90,000 UK pounds to get one. Ouch! And finally, the humble library van, or mobile library, or library bus, is an essential part of life for many communities around the world. While they're not so common in busy inner cities, they are a virtual lifeline for those living further out. And this week, Volvo unveiled two all-new electric library buses entering into service in Sweden, combining the awesomeness of knowledge-giving books with the beauty of zero-emission transport. Each bus has been given a lovingly crafted custom paint job, and frankly, these are amazing. And I wish every region had them. As someone who relied on the library van as a child in rural East Anglia, we didn't have a car. 
This story made me burst into happy tears when I found out about it because, well, it's so wholesome. And without the library van of my youth, I honestly don't think I'd be doing what I am doing today. Here is to many more. And on that fantastic note, we are done for today. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't yet switched, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to do the switch. And when you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations. I'll be making more great content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, please stay safe, wash your hands, and keep yourself and your loved ones safe. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.